you know what is maven right maven is a built management tool why we use it we use it for adding the dependency what happens when we add dependency all the jar files related to that dependency will get added to your project correct yeah. when you add all the dependency all the jar files gets added under maven dependencies cool so yeah so what is maven why maven you know that now install and configure maven we haven't installed maven but normally okay earlier what used to happen when you install this um, intellij right eclipse marketplace okay let's go to eclipse marketplace and after that search for maven nowadays the advanced eclipse actually automatically gives you maven support so you don't have to individually go and add it but earlier it was not the case you used to create the multiple sorry simple java project but then later on you used to add the plugin for maven if you want to give support of maven to your project okay so let me show you how eclipse is handling it directly like without any plugin nowadays okay let's see it got hanged hmm if you look for maven you see it is already installed i haven't installed it i just installed testng but while installing testng there was one checkbox for maven which was already checked if i don't want uh, maven support i could have unchecked that one but uh, it was already checked so i kept it as it is okay but if you don't have maven support just go and search for maven and then install it okay yeah yeah just a second vijay yeah yes uh vijay so now yeah. you have to add it if you don't have this support okay now what happens when you add it you will get this form.xml file if you are not getting this form.xml file that means your project is not a maven project okay, okay. now one more thing here um if you don't have form.xml there are two ways you right click on your project uh go to maven Mm. Okay, one second. Not Maven. Configure, yeah. Go to configure and then convert to Maven project option. You will get here if it is already not a Maven project. So let me show you. This project is not a Maven project, right? There is no M above it. That means it's not a Maven project. It's a normal Java project. So what I'll do? No, this is Maven. This is Maven project. Form dot Excel XML is present here. Okay. Let me create one dummy project. let me just create normal java project okay no maven project and i'll name it as demo i created one dummy project but this is just a java project and that's why we have only j at the top right we don't have m at the top so you what you have yeah. to do click on configure convert to maven project you see i'm getting this yeah. option i'm getting this option because it is already not a maven project so let me convert to maven project the moment i convert to maven project finish now it is a maven project so you will get form.xml earlier it was not there okay. okay and then you can remove this thing if you want to otherwise you keep it as it is just uh, take this project to the next line and here add all all your dependency clear yep yep okay So now you know how to install and configure Maven. Now creating a Maven project, we are doing it from very first day, so you know that how to do it. Yeah. Importing Maven project into Eclipse. If I'll give you this project, okay, suppose this is my project, and someone gave me this project, how to import it from pen drive? I can take it into my machine, but from my machine, how to take it into workspace? That's a different story. So let me show you. Suppose this is my project. Okay, let me copy it. Mm okay let me go to properties let me go here let me create a copy of it copy paste item okay i created the copy i'll rename it i'll say okay a b c d e f 
this is my project suppose i want to import this project i don't i i was not never having it vijay worked on any project he gave me that project in pen drive and now i directly want to import it in my eclipse so that i can execute it okay so for that what you have yeah. to do first you have to look for the location of your workspace this is my workspace shanti and vijay under shanti yeah. and vijay workspace i have all my projects right so wherever my project is on desktop on in downloads or wherever my projects are okay first i'll copy that project and i'll put it in a workspace inside this workspace folder shanti and vijay okay you go here you see shanti and vijay folder is there and inside this i kept my project a b c d e f now yeah. how to take this project here that you have to do it like this see cancel everything the project is already in your workspace go to file say import and importing what a general project existing project into workspace click on this next browse the moment you browse you will get this option a b c d e f open select everything and finish Okay. The moment you finish it, you will get this project here, and now you can work on this project, which was of which is uh, actually, but now this is your project. Just clean your code so that all the Maven see Maven repositories are sorry Maven dependencies are not there, right? The moment you will yeah. clean it, even though in Form dot XML you have all the dependencies, but still there is no Maven dependencies added here. So to add that, you have to clean your project. So the moment you will clean your project, before cleaning, just save it first. After save, after saving, just clean your project. Clean. The moment you'll clean it, all the jar files will be added to your project. See this; it got added. Clear? Yeah. Yeah. So this is how you have to do it. The very first step is take the project. Even you can take it in a zip folder, or you can take it without zip. Unzip it, put it in a workspace, and then in that workspace you will imp. from that workspace you will import it clear yeah? yeah. simple simple step but just by importing it will not work because you need that maven dependency so you have to clean your code clear yeah okay now so you know how to import the maven project and what happens when you directly import it and what is the use of it If instead of Maven, I would have been using normal Java project, I had to add all the jar files manually instead of, uh, you know, just because of that form, it became very easy. I just have to clean my project, and all the jars are ready with me. Correct. Yeah. Now, what is form dot xml? You already know it. Form dot xml is the heart of your Maven project. If you don't have form dot xml, that means you will not be able to add any dependency, any plugin, any jar file, nothing. if your project will not see this form dot xml your project will not execute because it will not get all those jars and plugins which are required for execution of your code clear yep yeah. okay so you know this what is form dot xml now adding dependencies to form dot xml you already know it correct now there is one more topic where you have to execute your code with maven okay but to execute your code with maven you have to learn testng first so let me show you what is testng okay let me unmark it okay done now now let's switch back to testng now what is testng let me close everything i told you right what is testng or not earlier or we were working mm, with j unit yeah. Okay, let me check. Maybe I don't remember. What which unit framework we were we are using from st uh, starting? May uh, J unit or test engine? Test engine. Test engine? Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. Test output. Yeah, test engine. So you know, right? This is what is this test engine dot XML? You can add yeah. multiple tests inside it, right? If you know this, the test engine dot XML is nothing but um a collection of test cases you can execute because of test engine dot xml there is one more way okay yeah. uh you know what is form dot xml you know what is test engine dot xml test engine dot xml is for collecting all your test cases form dot xml is for adding all your dependencies and plugins but there is one more task that you can do with form dot xml and that is 
you can execute your testng.xml with form.xml i think last time i did that right or not not sure i think i did it with some other batches okay no problem no problem this is selenium project this is demo project let me delete it to avoid confusion here okay no problem so if you see under this form.xml okay under that this form.xml till now you were adding only dependencies there is one more thing that you can add to execute your testng.xml so what is that thing execute your code with execute your testng.xml with form dot xml there is a four lines of code there okay let me directly copy paste it mm. wow wow i'm not getting results seriously why so <laughs> okay maybe your internet is slow oh is it Okay, these are very small four lines of code that you have to copy always. So keep it with you. Uh, this is the code. Where is it? This one. Okay, yes. from this build to build, you have to copy nothing else. Just copy this from this build to build, and paste it in your Eclipse. Go to pom dot xml. After this dependencies, okay, paste yes. it here. Okay, one second. Okay, see this under this build in your Surefire plugin. Here you have to give the path of your testng.xml. So what is my path? My path is this. Let me go to properties. Let me copy the path. Cancel. Let me paste it here. Okay. So what we are doing? Normally you used to execute your code like this directly testng.xml execution, right? But yeah. this time we are executing testng.xml with form.xml. Okay, why we are doing it? That you will understand when we'll uh, learn Jenkins. But why, can, if if our code is executing directly with testng.xml, why, um, why cannot why we cannot get satisfied with that? There is a reason because, um, Jenkins does not support that. Jenkins needs form.xml. Okay, so we should know how to execute your testng.xml. With form dot xml, so now that I have given the path of my testing dot xml, that will be that I have given in form dot xml. Okay, so let's execute it. I think it's gonna give error, but let's see. Now, if I have to execute form dot xml, I'll right click. I'll say Maven. Sorry, run as. Uh, Maven build will also work. Maven test will also work. Okay, here you have to write a code. You gonna execute it, but there are multiple multiple ways of executing it. First thing, okay. One second. Ignore these goals for now. I'll explain you what are Maven goals. Okay. For now, let me just write test and apply and run. Let's see if it executes. Okay, it is doing something. It gave you error. You see. It is giving yeah. you some error while executing your testng.xml, and every time you will get this error that source and target options are not compatible. So for this, you have to add one code. Okay, you have to forcefully make the versions of your um, source and target same. Okay, so before this, this is Maven show of our plugin we have also added. You could have uh, um, left it also like. There is no compulsion that you have to add it, but if you have added, you should know why you added it. So if you see, this is a plugin which I have added under plugin tag. I have added one plug. Sorry, under plugins I have added plugin. So what is this show for plugin used for? It is used for creating different type of reports at the end. May it be HTML report, may it be text report. Okay. So gen for generating reports, we use show for plugin. Simple, nothing else. So if you'll remove it, the only 
uh, impacted area will be your reports clear yeah okay now see now let's see this maven shofar plugin i think this is the old version let's go for the latest version okay go to maven repository this one search for shofar plugin okay and go here and look for the latest one so latest one is 3.00 m7 which is which came in june okay let's copy this let's come here and change it here okay this is the latest shofar plugin now we have given path of test ng we have given path of our maven shofar plugin okay both the things are done now you should execute if still it is giving me target and source issue then i'll show you one more way right click on your pom.xml run as maven build let's see if it again gives the same error we have to add one more property there so it is downloading all the jars okay because this is the first time so it will download all the jars and after that it should start executing the code yeah it started executing my code okay let's wait a minute hmm what is happening which code we have added in testng.xml basic method alert click operation and demo one okay basic method alerts click operation and demo one is testng itself is executing or not let's see first run as testng suite if testng itself is not executing of course it's not going to execute using your form.xml so yes there is some issue here your testng itself is not executing open telemetry for tracing what is this okay i got it i think okay your test change itself is not executing so let's do one thing open any of the code suppose demo 1 what is there in demo 1 yeah i knew this is the issue okay take this one what is it multi frames go to your testng.xml and here basic methods instead of alerts write this multi frames okay i did some changes in alerts because of which that code was not executing okay so ignore that now see this basic methods dot multi frames is a class which i want to execute using testng.xml and later on with pom.xml which is maven but to execute something with pom.xml first i have to see if it is executing or getting executed with testng.xml or not so let's see this let's execute this testng.xml first run as testng suite okay this one got executed so this one got executed and it will take all the data also okay it will fail pass that is not our concern but it should execute Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it got field, maybe some ID or some expat issue, but it it got executed. In the same way, okay it got passed perfect 
Now ex let's execute this testng.xml using pom.xml. In pom.xml, we have given the path of testng.xml and let's execute it using pom.xml. So right click, run as maven build. You should also do the same thing. You should start the test. Yeah, Chrome started successfully. That means it is working. Okay, in case it will not work, you have to add those two lines of code which I was telling you. So I'll show you that just a minute. So this is one of the important interview questions that how you execute your test cases using form.xml. Test using testng.xml, everyone knows, but using form.xml, nobody knows. Right? So how to do it? You know the way. Cool. So now. Okay, everything got passed, build success, failure zero, test execution one, that means that got passed. Now, why this execution was important? Why we wanted to execute our, our test engine with pom.xml? That we'll see later when we, I'll teach you Jenkins, okay? Before that, Uh, have I already completed uh, this annotations of test ng or not? No. Not even the simple annotations like before test and after test? No. Okay. I taught you about JUnit or not? JUnit, no. No? Okay. See this. Good. Now, what we'll do is what is JUnit and what is test ng? Okay, that's a big question. Now I taught you testing from starting and while teaching you, I told you that it's a unit testing framework. Why we needed te unit testing framework so that there will be no dependency on the main method. Every method should be an individual method and there should not be any need of creation of main method. Correct? Yeah. Yeah, remember? Every individual method is an individual unit. This is what unit testing framework says. There, is, there should not be any dependency of one method execution on another. So earlier, what was happening, if I want to execute addition method, it was completion for me to call it in the main or write it in the main, then only I was able to execute it. So that dependency we have removed. Okay. So let me create one project for you. A different project. Okay. File. New project. And this time I'm creating Maven project. And I'll write G unit and test ng. What is the difference between them? We'll see that. Okay, I think spacing is not allowed, underscore is allowed. Okay. Okay. This G unit and test ng project got added under this form.xml. I'll add all the dependencies which we need quickly. So let's go to form.xml and let's add all these dependencies quickly. And no need of adding this um, show for plugin for now. So under this project, I'll add it. Control Shift F and save and project clean okay maven dependencies got added here and we are ready so let me close this project let me close this project okay now in this j unit and this test ng let's see what is the difference between j unit and test ng both of them are unit testing framework but j unit one is the old one Okay, and just because it's an old one, the annotations which we were having in JUnit was kind of old annotations. It was not that user friendly. What I mean by annotation, every time above test, we write at the rate test, correct? Yeah. Correct. Uh, if I open this, if I open any of your code. So what we were doing before method, test, yes. and after method, okay. this is what we were doing. We were using this before and after method. And these are the annotations of test ng, you see, org.testng. But similar to this, we had some annotations in JUnit also. So let me show you how JUnit used to work. 
let me close this project once again okay now focus on only one test case i'll right click new i'll not create class okay in source i'll not create class i'll click on other i'll go to oh okay okay one second right click new let's create on package first package is for j unit code and in this package i'll create new just a second okay get java j unit yeah j unit okay under this java you have j unit under this j unit you have j unit test case this is what we have to create okay earlier when people were writing code with j unit they were creating j unit test case okay, okay. so i'll add this next i'll give the name that okay this j unit is all about um mm, like it, it will give you annotations and using that annotation you will execute your code so let me show you i'll give some name that okay suppose code one enter okay done so when the first time i'll add this um see j unit 4 dependency automatically got added okay and first time by default you will get this dummy code so i'll remove this dummy code and i'll write my code And I'll write test one. Suppose this is test one method. Okay. Now you see this that there is no need of main method because we have prerequisite and post requisite. You already know this, correct? Just because it's a J unit code, you will right click, run as you will get the option of J unit test. Earlier, what you were getting test and J test. Now what you are getting? J unit test. Getting it? And why you are getting yeah. it? Because if you see everything related to J unit got added. Org dot J unit dot test. And that's why you are getting the option of J unit. Even if you remove this, it does not make any sense. Okay. See this. You imported the jar files of J unit. That's why your code is considered as a J unit test case. Okay. Now, if I execute it, I'll get the output, whatever I'm expecting. Okay. Similar to this, if I create before method and above this, I'll write at the rate before. So now you see, it is giving me a total six option out of which this is from test ng, this is from test ng, this is from test ng, this is again from test ng. Only this one and this one is from J unit. So I'll choose the before one. Okay, so you can directly write like this also. So in before you are you are going to print before and in after I'll print after. Okay. Now these two are not getting recognized. So what you have to do, shift command F first thing, control command shift O. In case of MacBook, command shift O. Otherwise it will be control shift O. Okay. okay? So the moment I press control shift O, these two lines got added here and all the errors are gone. That's a shortcut to add all the import, important files. Clear? Okay. So now in test in J, we have annotations like this before, after, test, but in, sorry, in J unit. But in test in J, we have very advanced annotation. For example, before test, before class, before method, all these annotations we have in test in J that I'm going to teach you now also, okay, in some time. So now if you execute it, see how you get the response. Run as J unit test. See whatever is in before that will execute before, then test, then after. Okay, so the same thing they have used, like the testing people, and they created such a platform which is more user friendly, which is very less confusing. 
so nowadays nobody asks you that you know j unit or not they ask you if you know test in g or not okay so let me close it so we wrote the code in g unit let's write the code in test in g now Uh oh. Okay. In this test in your packet, if you see new class. So in this test in you don't have to go for J unit class. You can create your normal class. So suppose my class one. Okay. In this class, I'll copy paste the same code. Why to write extra code? If you already have it. Okay, it came here. If it came here, I'll keep this one also here. Hmm. So in the source test Java, we have both the codes, J unit code also and test in G code also. Under this, I have class one. So I'll copy the code of this. And I'll paste it here. Okay, the same thing here, but these annotations are different. So we don't want JUnit annotations, so I'll remove it. Then it will give me error. So Control Shift O. The moment you click on Control Shift O, it will keep asking you which one you want to uh, take. So I'll say, okay, I want to take the test in G1 this time. Okay, similarly, Control Shift O. Okay, again, JUnit 1, let's remove it. Control shift O. Okay. By default, it is taking G unit one because add rate before is not present in test ng. So see this before method is there, before test is there, before class is there. These kind of annotations we have in test ng. So before method we will add. Before before annotation we don't have in test ng. You getting it right, which is what and yeah. what we are doing. Okay. Now same and same code. Okay. But now I'm using different type of annotation and there is importance to all these annotation. Let me explain you that this will seem exactly same, but it is different. Okay. How it is different. We'll see that in some time. So see this before test and after. Now, suppose you have multiple tests in the same class. You had one test one. Now let me copy this. And let me paste again and I'll say test two also. You have multiple tests. You can have n number of tests, right? So let me execute it. Now see the output, okay? So for every test, test one and test two, you see there is one before, there is one after. There is one before, there is one after. Getting it? Yeah. So that happened because of this iterate before method, okay? Now, Suppose you have two uh, code. Suppose let me create a copy of it and let me paste it. Okay, this is code two. So code one and code two. In code one, you have two test files. In code two, let me keep only one test, which is test three. Test three and they belong to code two file. And this will be code to test three, test three before class after class. Okay. Now see this. I will change the annotation. I'll say before class after class. Okay. Let's remove the J unit yeah. code. Now before method and after method, you understood that it executes before and after each test. Now you have to yeah. see before class and after class. Now let's execute it first and let's see. Now I have to, I want to execute these two together. Then only I'll be able to see the change. Oh, one second, I wrote it in J unit. I should write it in test in J. Hmm. Code one, code two. 
So these two code belongs to testng package. So let's add them in um, testng. So my project right now is not a testng project. So I'll convert it into testng by clicking on testng, convert to testng. The moment I click on testng, it will ask me how you want to execute. I'm saying I want to execute the packages. So it is giving me two packages. One is JUnit package, one is testng package. I'll say okay. And later on, from this testng.xml, I'll remove the JUnit code. I don't want to execute it. I only want to execute the testng one. Getting it? Yep. So whatever code I have in this testng package, all those code will execute. Okay. Now, let me execute the entire package now. Run as testng suite. Now focus on the code. Okay. See this. Before class got executed, after class got executed, and in between the test code of that class got executed, which is code two. Okay. Code two. So code two class was having before class and after class. Okay. So just for this class, how many test cases will be there? That does not matter to you. Okay. Just for this class, there will be this thing will be executing which is written in the before class and after class. Is that clear? Yeah. Before class and after class of code two. Before class and after class of code two. And test method of test of code two. Okay. So now if in this case, in, if in this class, you have two more methods, which is before method and after method also. So public void before method. And I'll write public void after method. Code to Okay, look at all the code. Okay, now you might be confused that in this code you have before method also, you have after method also, you have before class also, you have after class also. So, what is going to be the sequence? Okay, so this is a good example here. Let me execute all the code and show you what will be the sequence and why that sequence is there. So, right click, um, run as test in G suite. Okay, let's keep this output side. Okay, and let's see. Okay, my class name, okay, with this I'll change one second, okay. Where is the rename option? We do refactor. Hmm. Refactor rename. Okay, suppose this is class A. Okay, class two, I'll change it to B. And in test ng also, I'll change it to, okay, package name is same, no problem. Okay, save everything and let's execute your test ng.xml once again. See this. Mm, code one, 
what is code one now hmm. see this whatever you have written in before method and after method that will execute before your test and after your test correct so you have in a5 you have before method before and after for test one and test two right so if you see for test one and test two there is their separate before and after got it yeah correct but in the case of class b you had only one test method so that test method is here at the start at the start before executing anything of that class at the start the before class executed at the end very end after class got executed and in between before method and after method make sense yeah. yeah okay so always follow the sequence if you have before method and after sorry before class if you have both then sequence will be before class first then before method and then test then before sorry after method then after class after class and before class will be topmost thing topmost and the end one clear yeah getting it so you understood three annotation three set of annotation now one is at the rate test one is before and after method one is before and after class now yes now there are few more annotation now you see the power of test change test change gives you even more powerful annotation than j unit okay yeah 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 any doubts here no okay okay so now let's see what is advantages over j unit uh okay let's see what is test ng you know it already test ng is a advanced version of j unit j unit and it is actually a unit testing framework what is unit testing framework it removes the dependency of one method on an of uh, from another and it it considers all the method as a individual entity okay this is happening because of jenkins so just a minute okay so this thing you know what is test ng advantages of test ng over j unit it is that it is more advanced it contains good annotation and in fact the reporting of test ng is also very nice so we'll see that later how j so unit mostly reports... we use test ng over j unit right yes yes like in my entire career i never used j unit i on personal level i uh, learned how, what was j unit but then i never used it nobody prefers j unit okay okay and this j unit and this uh, test ng both are for just for annotation purpose only okay so if you yeah. know the meaning of annotations you will understand everything clear yeah okay why do we need test ng in selenium because we want to execute our test cases one by one and we want to make the filter between the test cases that one time i want to execute something sometimes i don't want to execute something for example uh Yeah, if I don't execute this test two, I'll remove this annotation. I'll comment out this thing. It will not execute. Only those thing will execute which is having a test annotation or something like before and after. Codes which are not having any annotations will not want to execute. Clear? Yeah. So this is the power of annotation. You can any time instead of commenting the entire code today, it is just three lines of code. Maybe tomorrow it will be thousand lines of code. You are not going to do this. Thousand lines of code comment and then again uncomment. You just go here, comment the test file, and that's done. Cool. So this is the power yeah. of annotation in both test ng and j unit. But then in test ng we have some extra features also. Okay. Yeah. So let me stop the recording here and restart it because it is getting very lengthy.